It's time now for our teacher of the week. He's a social studies teacher at Sayre Middle School and also an assistant coach of the Sayre High School football team that finished the regular season undefeated this year. Shaka Cummings is our teacher of the week. He joins me now from his classroom at Sayre School in downtown Lexington. Congratulations. Thank you so much for having me. I, I appreciate it. And I love that you got the football shout out in too. It was a great season for us. We ran into Pikeville, unfortunately, but we'll get them next year, hopefully. <laughs> it was still, it's still an incredible season for a big season for a small school. And you know, you were in a different situation than many of the teachers across Kentucky in that Sayre School has been in person for nearly the entire school year. What has that been like? So what I've told folks as they ask me this question is that I try not to get too much into judgment of any situation versus how I feel. And I, I love being with my kids. So it feels great. And we are doing as much as we can at Sayer between social distancing. We, we have a whole initiative that we call Safe at Sayer. Social distancing, plexiglass, spacing. We're doing everything that we can to try to be as safe as we possibly can be as we are in person. So it feels great to be in person. It feels great to be able to practice with my football players. It feels really good for me. And so um, I, I love being with my kids and I miss them when we were remote last year at the end of the year. So it feels great to be in person this year. We are getting ready for the annual Martin Luther King Day commemorations. And as you look ahead to that day, what are, first off, what are your memories? How do you view his life and legacy? So me personally, when I think of Dr. Martin Luther King, one of the things I think about is the power that he was able to draw from. The, the reality was Martin Luther King created a grassroots movement of people locally that ended up expanding nationally when we think about American civil rights. And so one of the lessons that I always try to bring to the classroom when I talk to my students is just that, like recognizing the power that you have. And I remember being a student and not always fully grasping the fact that as you know, one individual in a middle school classroom in New York City, like how much power do I really have? But seeing someone like Dr. Martin Luther King understand that as one individual, he had the power to influence others. And it was that influence that really gave him an incredible amount of power enough to literally change the shape of a country which is incredible. And so that's part of the lessons that I remember as a kid. And it's also part of the lessons I try to impart upon students to remember that even though you might feel small in any particular moment, you have power, you have the power to be able to influence. And so make sure that you positively use that power, find the things that you're passionate about and put your energies toward that because you never know how much you can move, right? You can move maybe a few rules at your school. You could also, potentially move the world. Time now has a kid of the year. There's no reason why I say a middle school student couldn't win that award if you truly had the passion and you were able to influence enough folks. What, what is your message to the young people? Your message to middle school students may be different than the message that you share with the high school students, for example. No, absolutely. When, um, when you look at Martin Luther King, there's a lot of complexities into uh, his ent the entirety of his legacy. So I always encourage the research. But what I do talk to uh, uh, students about regardless of age, right? I want them to number one, understand that the American civil rights movement isn't something that's like ancient history. I do this whole lesson with them where I begin by asking students, who's the oldest person that you know? And you'll find that folks know their grandparents and maybe they're in the seventies, maybe great grandparents in their eighties and nineties. And then I have them research Barbara Walters and look up how old she is and when she was born. And she was born in 1929. She's 91 years old. Martin Luther King was born in the same year. So when you start thinking about the span of a lifetime, like had he not been murdered, he could still be alive today, potentially preaching similar messages. And so I want kids to understand, number one, that the American Civil Rights Movement isn't ancient history. It's something that was happening in the 60s and 70s, and that allows them to have context. And then as you look at the Civil Rights Movement and the recency of it, how do we take parallels from those movements and bring them into things that are happening today. Now, it's easy to do that when you start looking at this summer, when you start looking at Black Lives Matter. And so over the years, there have been these different events that you could draw these parallels toward looking at Dr. Martin Luther King and looking at current events. And obviously that's one of the best ways to bring history alive for students is to take something that 
is out of context for them because they weren't alive when it happened and compare it to something that is abundantly uh, vibrant today. So that way they can draw those parallels and compare and contrast. Yeah. Well, you're doing a wonderful job of bringing history to life for the students there at Sayre <laughs> Middle School. Congratulations on being our Teacher of the Week and thanks so much for your time. Thank you so much. I really appreciate it. Have a good day and Happy New Year, everybody. Happy New Year. <laughs>